This podcast is brought to you by the School of Advanced Study, University of London. Um, I'm here with my son, Ruben Martin. Um, I am a writer, I am an artist, I am a cultural activist as well. Um, with this slot, I'm kind of engaging with the performance archives of Pa Orlando Martins, because that's how he's fondly known and in Nigeria. He was born in Lagos, for those who don't know, in either 1899 or 1895, according to the naval records I found in Southampton. He was an actor, a culture pioneer, of international standing in the early 20th century. Has anyone actually heard of Orlando Martins? Of course, <laughs> most of you haven't. <laughs> and that's what my, our endeavors are. Um, I'm related to him through my late father. He was, now let's get this right, my late father's mother's my late father's mother, so that's my grandmother, paternal grandmother, was Orlando's sister. Um, you can Google him, but some background information, as most of you don't know him. He was born at 22 Okasuna Street, Lagos Island. His parents, Emmanuel Akinola Martins, and that was his birth name, and Madame Paula Edoa Soares. He was the only son, having five older sisters, of an elite Brazilian Victorian returning family. I never knew my grandmother, nor Orlando, so part of this journey is with archives is to find out more about my own Lagosian heritage. It is a work in progress. Um, we were, I was recently privileged in funding a trip by the British Council. Um, with my son um, to do some groundwork to raise a play and an international project. I'll talk about that some more really. Um, most of my background information in working on this project for two years has come from a book that was written two years before he died. He died in 18, 1985, sorry, in Lagos where he was born. Taku Fulami wrote a book two years before he was born, sorry, uh, called Orlando the Legend. And in it, he says that unlike ourselves in connection with our African ancestry, Orlando knew his paternal grandfather, who was a wood seller, who lived to 120 years, and he was a freed Portuguese slave who would tell the great-grandchildren, including Orlando, about his days of slavery. Papai was very humorous. Humorous. We used to tease him, smoking brown paper bags and messing around with his tortoises. If he got hold of any of us, he would give us a taste of his whip, which he fondly called Pamatora, which is a Portuguese word um, for whip. His father was a colonial administrator in the marine department, a path Orlando did not wish to follow. He was an accounts clerk for a French produce firm on the marina, having graduated from the newly opened Eco Boys School with a very British education. And that was where he first adopted the name Orlando. Why did he leave Lagos? To join the British in the First World War to fight the Germans. His maternal grandmother, a trader in Cameroon, gets prisoner of war, gets taken as a prisoner of war by the Germans. It was when the French, Belgian and British take, took over Cameroon, she was released and comes home telling of her mistreatment. He's fired up. But I also speculate, perhaps watching um, ships in the marina, maybe he was already dreaming of going to the UK. The play, which is to be produced by Unilag, um, Lagos, the University of Lagos Theatre Arts MA students, um, has come out of a recent trip, as I said. Um, what I did find was 
actually going to Lagos for the first time and having previously spent about two years delving in archives was that it was a very, very rich uh, landscape from which Alanda grew up and also meeting elders that knew Pa Orlando. And it kind of felt a sense of urgency because obviously these elders who were youngsters when they worked with Pa Orlando when he went back to Nigeria just before independence um, um, are getting on, they're not going to be around. There was a lot of enthusiasm um, in relation to the project. And what I envisage, as well as the play, which I have to completely rewrite, actually, um, for the 1st of June, so I'm preoccupied with that, is a um, archives, looking at archives around themes of the West African Students' Union. Um, the West African Students' Union is a link, which I kind of discovered mainly through Julius Ojo Cole, who was one of the pioneer founders of a student um, pan-African organisation operating in London in the late 20s. And in fact, I discovered that Orlando's only son is in fact fathered by Julius and Doris, a white English woman. So I've kind of used that as a storyline. Um, the play is focused on, on their intertwined relationship. Two bright young Nigerians who meet by chance in the UK. One driven and focused actor, the other a student of literature at King's College, which is in fact Ojo Cole's own story. A homeless actor is invited to move into the student's home, which he shares with his recently married English wife who works for the colonial office. Um, he drops out of university, disillusioned. He's studying English literature, saying he needs to find his own history of, of African civilization, and that he's going on a fact-finding mission with Herbert. We've also got um, um, Casely Hayward, I've forgotten your name, I should know better. <laughs> Silu, sorry. <laughs> and Ancestor as well. So it'll be interesting to actually look and look at some of the writings, really. Um, but only he's supposed to be on the fact-finding uh, mission, but gets struck down with a terminal illness. He doesn't share, so he never returns. Anyway, um, when I look more closely, what I did come across, let's have a look at some of these images. Um, I'm not very good at technology, so do bear with us. Is that corrupt? No. That's not mine. Someone else. I'm a bit stuck here. Should be this. Sorry, bear with us. Oh, there we are. Sorry, I should have started with this, really. Um, okay. What I did discover, um, apart from about 30 films in which he's playing a colonial native, with the theatre archives, something else is... is um, Something, it's a different picture. He gets real parts, speaking parts, and what? A funeral brochure. Let's have a look. These are some of the elders that we met. This is Chief Gadama Mosi, who is a playwright and also said that he was. Um, what was he? He was encouraged by Orlando actually visiting and seeing his place in Lagos. This is another elder who worked with Orlando when he returned to, to, to Lagos and worked for the Western TV service. Um, Oba, here be out, Sonagu, yes. And what he did give us was this, um, this is at the Institute of African Studies, a brochure. 
a memorial brochure. Orlando had a formidable, formidable funeral service and within that actually detailed a lot of the plays that he, he did do. Um, he received the highest theatre award um, in 1983, a member of the Order of Niger by the Nigerian President and a national award in theatre arts ceremony at the University of Calabar by the Society of Nigerian Artists. Um, in looking at the funeral programme, which I did have a chance to scan, what we did notice was that the reviews of his plays came from a whole range of places. Trinidad, Nigeria Journals, US Crisis by Nancy Cunard, and East Africa as well as West African journals of performances. And what I speculated, there were obviously links to actually have that publicity that you could only dream of for plays. Um, as a writer myself, I was kind of thinking there's obviously some kind of movement going on. If we look at the late 20s, um, it's a time of upheaval, an economic depression, um, people are really quite um, an economic depression, high unemployment and a rise in communism. And it is actually the communists who are quite active in the workers' theatre movement. And this is where Orlando actually gets roles in plays. Um, there's two plays, Stevador, by someone called um, Andre van Geisenham, and he actually is the director of Unity. Unity is a workers' theatre movement, and there is a quote, I'll see if I can find it, by Dame Sybil Thorndike. Theatre is for the alive, that they may have more life, for the tired who want spiritual or mental jerking, jerking up, or a glimpse of a larger being, now let's look around and see what our theatre gives us. Unity, which came out of the workers' theatres movement, was unashamedly socialist. They want to build a theatre, a workers' people's theatre, built to serve and dramatise the lives and struggles of, of ordinary workers. Um, there were 250 branches, um, and the plays that Orlando got parts in was Stevador, which is headed up by uh, Paul Robeson, and They Shall Not Die, which highlighted the Scotch for boys. He was to do a later play in 1957 um, with, trying to think who was it? It was directed by Peter Brook and written by Sartre, um, The Respectful Prostitute. Um, let's try to see if I can move this. This is the, sorry, let's go back, okay. This is the part of the theatre programme that they had for his wake. And as you can see, it's really, really extensive. It would have gone on all night, um, after the minute silence at midnight, a whole range of performances. It was amazing that we actually met one of the lecturers at Unilag said I was there as a youngster, age 15, and contributed to his performance. It was led by um, the Arts Council in Lagos State, for which Orlando was an advisor before he died. Uh, the WASI programme from 1927, and if you look, it has contribution by Julius O.J. Cole. So the storyline is actually taken directly from the archives using his direct writings. Um, I have to go home to affirm myself I'm a human being from a world civilization, and I need to be true to my own nature. I do not need to imitate the British. Showboat, actually, if we're kind of looking at his performance record, it starts in 1922 in a circus, um, riding an elephant with a red velvet robe with a spot of clowning. The elephant has actually got a sponge and he kind of washes Orlando's face. In 1928, the Diglev Ballet 
with Anna Pavlov, London, one of the three roles of the Nubian slave. I hated the part, Orlando says. In 1928, which we have here, Showboat, Jury Lane, with Paul Robeson. Only Orlando leads a rebellion. I led a rebellion of black artists who refused to sing the song of the chorus and the famous Old Man River song. I'm sure people here, the older ones of us, would know it, really. The line that says, if you kind of look online, um, it's actually changed in the earlier version on Tube to Dark East, was actually niggers all work on the Mississippi. Um, we were hungry. We had to sing the nigger song or be sacked and black faces employed. They sang the song alongside black faces. In a review, it does say Mr. Robeson's melancholy song about the old river is one of the two chief hits of the evening um, of a rather heavyweight entertainment contemporary report. I think one of the clips, um, I'll put it on there. It's there, um, I don't know if I can try and link it, second here. Another film that he did, he did about 30 films. Invariably, he's holding a spear, and it's a colonial kind of backdrop coming out of the colonial unit. One of them, uh, Saunders of the Rivers, which he did again with Paul Robeson in 1935, has a, if I can get it plain, that's a, oh no, it's not going to work. It's a canoe song. Um, and what I discovered, even though the, the parts are really difficult, there's a real powerful beauty in the songs and the singing. And the other thing I discovered, well, we discovered, that's still out there, that Orlando sang. I didn't actually manage to hear a recording. I'll just do a little clip of it. Thank you, James. kind of see it's the music. Apparently Orlando did actually sing on that, I was kind of told, and wasn't credited. He wasn't credited with a lot of um, particularly the film's roles that he played. There's about 30 films, as I say. There's probably about um, at least 12 plays. Um, there's two songs over two. Let me try and get back to the slides. I'm not very good at this. Did I get out? Sorry, <laughs> you're going to have to stand by us and help us. Um, which CLR James wrote. Um, yeah. uh, let's see, worker state of movement, talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Uh, yes, this is it um, from The Times. He plays Spokeman, speaking role, um, and there's two, there's two uh, plays which are about, um, I suppose, the struggle, which is not coming out of America. I see it really as kind of a global story, the, to be a black person in Europe or US, subject to Jim Crow legislation. There was a lot of artists in, in Europe, particularly London. Um, and one of the things, the play, the project, there's a project aspect that I'm looking to raise, which is to look at archives, 
looking at performances, so performances of West Africans um, who were in West Africa the early 20th century, particularly before the Second World War. So we're really looking at the 20s and 30s, and we're looking at performances in uh, the UK, particularly around Orlando. His contemporaries, as well as Paul Robeson, was Robert Adams, Adelaide Hall, who had a very, very long career um, um, in, in, in London, doing a lot of shows. And she was actually married to a, a Trinidadian seaman. Orlando was a seaman as well. It's one of those jobs that was available for West Africans alongside um, acting roles. And, you know, some of you might be aware there were riots in the seaports. Um, you know, quite vicious riots. At least five, five black West Africans died as a result of that. Um, Cardiff, London, Liverpool. Um, so we had a chance to put... This was at the Westminster Theatre. I don't know how the audience responded. Um, a response to, um, again, Paul Robeson. Um, when Paul Robeson comes to the UK, he says the struggle of the US with um, Jim Crow legislation, he kind of links to the working class struggle when he heard um, a taxi, a chauffeur driven person who everyone's in love with, Paul Robeson, speak to his driver and he suddenly realised that's what the struggle is. And Unity Theatre was part of putting some of those struggles. This is Stevador, and he shares one of the roles alongside Robert Adams. I like the black and white black drop there. Um, yeah. I'm a bit stuck here. There we are. This is Colony, which was written by an English writer for um, the Workers' Theatre no, Unity. Um, and directed by Herbert Marshall, and that's Orlando there, really. That's 1939, um, and I found that at, I'm trying to think, the Victorian Albert Museum. This is Colony, the play, it's part of the Unity Archives. This I found at Bristol Theatre Archives Collection, The Respectable Prostitute, um, written by Jean-Paul Sartre. He plays a Negro, and um, this is directed by Peter Brook. Um, yes, and speaking parts as well. It is quite a vivid play. And one of the visions with the project, with the archive project, is that archives are researched in Nigeria and here. Artists are employed to create short performance pieces, which will then be digitalised and projected in the space in a pop up. And the material will be exchanged between here and Nigeria. Um, this is early stages, but a lot of excitement um, in Lagos with that. This um, is Cry the Beloved Country. Has anyone come across that film? Yes. Alan Patton. He plays uh, Reverend Kumalo, and this is actually St. Martyrs in the Field Crypt. And very, very moving. I was actually nearly moved to tears, actually, when just reading some of those lines and just kind of feeling the kind of weight of the struggle, which is a global struggle, struggle of the diaspora. And um, one of my kind of ideas behind the performance project is the space that allows us to reflect what it was to be an artist in the early 20th century and the struggle that we have now. Um, the story, as those of you to know, is two men, um, and both have sons that die. The priest's son actually kills the farmer's son, the white farmer. It's a beautifully written um, book, which in its time was actually very highly regarded, really. These are the reviews. Uh, English news, quite the beloved country, much of the acting immediately reaches the heart, notably that of Orlando Martins. The Daily Times and Morning Post is a Nigerian publication. These, as you can see, there's a Cambridge News for the Respectable Prostitute. Um, Where No Vultures Fly, that's one of the colonial uh, Maomaya films. 
and the Hasty Heart was both a play at the Audridge Theatre in 1945 that became a film from which he became quite well known. He doesn't speak a single word but steals the show. Um, and as you can see, East African Standard and Trinidad. Um, that's the bus that Ober um, Anger had of Orlando, which is actually taken from an image that I do recognise. And there's this. One of the songs, you know, as I said, I was amazed to realise that he sang, and these are one of the songs that he sang I kind of found on YouTube. Orlando does go back after 42 years in the UK. There is another play that he does, which is at the Royal Court in 1957, Member of the Wedding. It's directed by Tony Richardson, who marries Vanessa Redgrave. And he plays T.T. T. Williams, Errol John, who had the moon on a rainbow shore the following year, is also in the play. And Bernice Redgrave plays, plays the woman in it, truly. Unfortunately, it had a very unflattering review, um, and it's how not to write a play. But it's good to see that theatre providing opportunities for directors to improve their art. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll just do a little clip of this one because it's really beautiful. Am I winning? Oh. No. Oh. he sang, it's a traditional kind of celebration of Lagos when he returns home. He had singing lessons. Um, he had um, Amanda Aldridge, who's the daughter of Ira Aldridge, who also taught um, Robeson and Marianne Anderson. Anyone heard of her? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's good. Same voice coach, really. Um, yes, so it's amazing to actually discover him as a, a, someone who sang, because in some ways it's kind of opened up and appreciated the artist as quite someone very, very diverse, but also a connection through music. And certainly um, being in Lagos, music was quite a significant experience. So just to sound up, let's can go back to the slides really. I'm terrible at this, am I? Sorry. Okay. These are quotes, Orlando. You really get a sense of him as a person. A true actor has to dream beyond the imagination. You die if you worry, you die if you don't, so why worry at all? <laughs> a hungry man is like a beggar without a choice. You have to smile, otherwise the face you show the wall world becomes ugly. He had an amazing sense of humour, and obviously it took him a long way. He was very, very good at networking as well. So in summing up, what am I learning? 
I'm learning about myself. I'm thinking and reviewing my practice as a theatre maker. And in developing and quite an ambitious project, we've got the kind of still negotiating with um, the African Institute of Studies in Ibadan and a group of young people, highly dynamic, sharing their work um, to create performance pieces, as I said, from archives and making links here um, yeah, with the universities. It's very early stages, but it's an opportunity to share uh, music, ideas, literature, and make connection as to what it is to be part of a diaspora which is embracing you, you know, as home. The welcome home was formidable. Uh, we really could not appreciate the amount of welcome home. Um, really just opening up and thinking as it was then in the early 20th century for those artists, those writers, those Pan-Africanists and what it is, means to us now. Okay, can I say I'm also going to be working, I hope I could be, get a bit better at this, doing um, a talk actually, Song, Struggle and Resistance at the Victoria and Albert Museum on the 21st of April. It's one of their art and existence talk and looking at the artists um, in the early 20th century. Um, I think that's it, really. <laughs>